Hi, good morning. Um, today we're in Ezekiel 15, um, 15 and 16. And I hope you are well. I'm just going to read today. Uh, not feeling too too good with time, and I don't want to be rushed and and you know reading in a way that it just it just comes out sloppy or something. Um, please join me in prayer as I give thanks for today. Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up and blessing us with another day. I pray that we are able to do things better than we did yesterday. I pray for this reading, Lord, that you're in our presence, that it is your message and your voice that is heard and not my own. I pray for whatever's going on that is troubling us, that's an obstacle, that's hurting us for us to, uh, hard for us to get past, Lord. Wait, may we put it at your feet and know that all will be well. May we have faith and hope in you and trust you with all it is that is bothering us or hurting us, Father God. Put it, our hearts and our minds in a place where we can spend a moment with you. May we grow in your word. May we grow in relationship with you. I pray for the viewer right now. Bless them and keep them, their families and their loved ones. Bless them in their workplace. Bless them at school. Bless them if they're job hunting. Bless them if they're having troubles in relationships. Bless them if they're going through a, a illness, a disease, a fighting cancer. If they're missing somebody. If somebody's out there hurting because they don't know what's going on with their loved ones. Or if they're in war and they find themselves alone. Father God, may they always call out on you. May we always trust in you. And as always, may you take care of your people. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. The Outcast Divine, 15. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, how is the wood of the vine better than any other wood? The vine branch, which is among the trees of the forest, is wood taken from it to make any object, or can men make a peg from it to hang any vessel on? Instead, it is thrown into the fire for fuel. The fire devours both ends of it, and its middle is burned. Is it useful for any work? Indeed, when it was whole, no object could, meet, could be made from it. How much less will it be useful for any work when the fire has devoured it and it is burned? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Like the wood of the vine among the trees of the forest, which I have given to the fire for fuel, so I will give up the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will set my face against them. They will go out from one fire but another fire shall devour them then you shall know that i am the lord when i set my face against them thus i will make the land desolate because they have persisted in unfaithfulness says the lord god that's a tough one to talk about he's talking about wood being used for fire and not used to be ma to make anything which it's still useful in that it's a fire but once it's burned, it's burned, it's gone, it's it's desolate, like he says, it's 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 ashes. Whereas if you were to be made into something, you would be living, you would be used for something else, you would be um whole you would be tangible, you would be something that people would use and keep and to compare us to a piece of wood that is burnt and no longer after and how useful is it? I mean, the fire, yes, was useful. We ate for a moment. But again, there's that moment. It was just used for a moment in time and not for something that could be tangible for more than burning more than one time. So we don't want to be like that. Wood. That's actually, I don't know why that's bothering me. It's bothering me that that, um, that example of what God will make his people that he is um, placing in judgment. So let me uh, go ahead and read God's love for Jerusalem 16. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations and say, Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, Your birth and your nativity are from the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. As for your nativity on the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut, nor were you washed in water to cleanse you. You were not rubbed with salt, nor wrapped in swaddling cloths. No eye pitied you to do any of these things for you, to have compassion on you. But you were thrown out into the open field when you yourself were loathed on the day you were born. And when I passed by you and saw you struggling in your own blood, I said to you in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you in your, in your blood, live. I made you thrive like a plant in the field, and you grew matured and became very beautiful. Your breasts were formed, your hair grew, but you were naked and bare. 
when I passed by you again and looked upon you. Indeed, your time was the time of love. So I spread my wing over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I, wore, I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you. And you became mine, says the Lord God. Then I washed you in water. Yes, I thoroughly washed off your blood and I anointed you with oil. I clothed you in embroidered cloth and gave you sandals of badger skin. I clothed you with fine linen and covered you with silk. I adorned you with ornaments, put bracelets on your wrist and a chain on your neck. And I put a jewel in your nose, earrings in your ears, and a beautiful crown on your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver, and your clothing was of fine linen, silk, and embroidered cloth. You ate pastry of the fine flour, honey, and oil. You were exceedingly beautiful and succeeded to royalty. Your fame went out among the nations because of your beauty, for it was perfect through my splendor, which I have bestowed on you, says the Lord God. Jerusalem's Harlotry 15. But you trusted in your own beauty, played the harlot because of your fame, and poured out your your harlotry on every pass, everyone passing by who would have it. You took some of your garments and adorned multicolored high places for yourself and played the harlot on them. Such things should not happen nor be. You have also taken your beautiful jewelry from my gold and my silver, which I had given you and made for yourself male images and played the harlot with them. You took your embroidered garments and covered them, and you set my oil and my incense before them. Also my food which I gave you, the pastry of fine flour, oil, honey, which I fed you. You set it before them as sweet incense, and so it was, says, it was, says the Lord, the Lord God. Moreover, you took your sons and your daughters, whom you bore to me, and these you sacrificed to them to be devoured, were your acts of harlotry a small matter that you have slain my children and offered them up to them by causing them to pass through the fire? And in all your abominations and acts of harlotry, you did not remember the days of your youth when you were naked and bare, struggling in your blood. Then it was so after all your wickedness. Woe, woe to you, says the Lord God, that you also built for yourself a shrine and made a high place for yourself in every street. You built your high places at the head of every road and made your beauty to be aboard. You offered yourself to everyone who passed by and multiplied your acts of harlotry. You also committed harlotry with the Egyptians, your fleshly neighbors, and increased your acts of harlotry to provoke me to anger. Behold, therefore I stretched out my hand against you, diminished your allotment, and gave you up to the will of those who hate you, the daughters of the Philistines, who were ashamed of your lewd behavior. You also played the harlot with the Assyrians, because you were insatiable. Indeed, you played the harlot with them, and still were never you were never satisfied. When they were insatiable, they were never satisfied, just as he says. So they kept going, and, and their deeds became worse than before. And they forgot where they came from. And they took for granted all the blessings that the Lord had given them and cheated them as they were they were dirt, worth nothing. And then not just that, but they took his altars and they placed idols, false idols that they worshipped there. And they um, made him mad. They angered the Lord. Moreover, you multiplied your acts of harlotry as far as the land of the traitor, Chaldea, and even then you were not satisfied. How degenerate is your heart, says the Lord God, seeing you do all these things, the deeds of a brazen harlot. Jerusalem's adultery. You erected your shrine at the head of every road and built your high place in every street. You were not like a harlot because, yet you were not like a harlot because you scorned payment. You are an adulterous wife who takes strangers instead of her husband. Men make payment to all harlots, but you made your payments to all your lovers and hired them to come to you from all around for for your harlotry. You are the opposite of other women in your harlotry because no one solicited you to be a harlot in that you gave payment but no payment was given to you. Therefore, you are the opposite. Therefore, you are worse. You weren't, uh, you weren't lustful and perverse and, and selling yourself and, and selling yourself for money to gain a, a wage. You give yourself for free. And so that's what he's saying by it, because, by them, their acts being worse than the, than before. It just keeps, it, um, it just gets worse as, as time goes on in their, in their sinful acts. Jerusalem's lovers will abuse her. 35. Now then, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, because your filthiness was poured out and your nakedness and covered in your harlotry with your lovers and with all your abominable idols and because of the blood of your children, which you gave to them, 
Surely, therefore, I will gather all your lovers with whom you took pleasure, all those you loved and all those you hated. I will gather them from all around against you and will uncover your nakedness to them, that they may see all your nakedness. And I will judge you as women who break wedlock or shed blood are judged. I will bring blood upon you in fury and jealousy. I will also give you into their hand and they shall throw you throw down your shrines and break down your high places. They shall also strip you of your clothes, take your beautiful jewelry and leave you naked and bare. They shall also bring up an assembly against you and they shall stone you with the stones and thrust you through with their swords. They shall burn your houses with fire and execute, execute judgments on you. In the sight of many women, I, and I will make you cease playing the harlot, and you shall no longer hire lovers. So I will lay to rest my fury towards you, and my jealousy shall depart from you. I will be quiet and be angry no more, because you did not remember the days of your youth, but agitated me with all these things. Surely I will recompense your deeds on your own head, says the Lord God, and you shall not commit lewdness in addition to all your abominations. More wicked than Samaria and Saddam. Indeed, everyone who quotes Proverbs will use this proverb against you. Like mother, like daughter, you are mother's daughter, loathing husbands and children, and you are the sister of this and you are the sister of your sisters who loathe their husbands and children. Your mother was a Hittite and your father an Amorite. Your elder sister is Samaria, who dwells with her daughters to the north of you, and your younger sister who dwells to the south of you is Saddam and her daughters. You did not walk in their ways nor act according to their abominations, but as if that were too little, you became more corrupt than they in all your ways. As I live, says the Lord God, neither your sister Saddam nor her daughters have done as you and your daughters have done. Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Saddam. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food and abundance of idleness. Neither did the, she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. And they were haughty and committed abomination. Let me slow down. Haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw fit. Samaria did not commit half of your sins, but you have multiplied your abominations more than they and have justified your sisters by all the abominations which you have done. You who judge your sisters bear your own shame. Also, because the sins which you committed were more abominable than theirs, they are more righteous than you. Yes, be disgraced also and bear your own shame because you justified your sisters. When I bring back their captives, the captives of Saddam and her daughters and the captives of Samaria and her daughters, then I will also bring back the captives of your captivity among them, that you may bear your own shame and be disgraced by all that you did when you comforted them. When your sister Saddam and her daughters returned to their former state, and Samaria and her daughters returned to their former state, then you and your daughters will return to your former state. For your sister Saddam was not byword in your mouth in the days of your pride, before your wickedness was uncovered, it was like the time of the reproach of the daughters of Syria and all those around her, and of the daughters of the Philistines who despised you everywhere. You have paid for your lewdness and your abominations, says the Lord, for thus the Lord for thus says the Lord God, I will deal with you as you have done, who despised the oath by breaking the covenant, an everlasting covenant. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with you in these days of your youth and I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Then you will remember your ways and be ashamed when you receive your older and your younger sisters, for I will give them to you for daughters, but not because of my covenant with you. And I will establish my covenant with you. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, that you may remember and be ashamed and never open your mouth any more because of your shame when I provide you atonement for all you have done, says the Lord God. I hope that you received a word out of that message. It was great in detail. And it only reminds me of all the things that I have done that I'm shameful, full of shame with. But there's God who is um, wanting to forgive us of our shame and make us pure again. And because I, I have a lot of past that I say was me living in sin, being promiscuous, and I'm not proud of that that one it, it just has me reading it and thinking like am i her am i like this adulterer am i like this harlot am i the hoe like many times i would say i was and i'm not proud of that but i'm thankful for this opportunity and another day to ask him for his forgiveness and his guidance so that i may be saved um i pray you're blessed 
And so always take care of yourself. God bless you. Bye.